Hi everyone, welcome to week 7 of me going through hormone replacement therapy. And last, vi last week's video may have been a little offhand or kind of crazy, but there was a lot of shit going on. But I now have also tried to make things work a little better and then this past week of videos, well, won't be for you guys, it'll be for me, but um, with the work videos are coming out, the Athens ones are Athens, I have no idea how to, still I don't know how to pronounce that name, that are coming out at this time when I'm recording this, and they're going to be messed up because I'm still learning this system OBS. So, forgive me for getting things to work right. And I've been trying to give like these videos a theme, or at least an idea, so it doesn't sound like me just winding all the time. But, yeah, so I've been trying to do, try to make the things better so I can get more people through here, but who knows. But today, I'm going to be talking about, you know, how clothing works. I know it may sound odd and people may not want to try, well, let me back up here a second. Clothing when you're transgender is a big topic. It's a hard thing to deal with. It's something... You actually have to work on because transitioning from you know one gender to the other, and the clothes are completely different. They have different styles, different cuts, how everything fits, what counts. You know, it's a long and annoying process. Like when I start first started out and trying to you know learn this stuff on my own, hidden, I didn't really understand most of the stuff because. With male and female clothing, they count the waist differently and how they do measurements. Because for like male clothes, like especially, especially male pants, what they do, what you what you do is you measure basically what they measure it out to is the waist and the length of your leg, and that's it. Which makes it a little easier because you just measure, you know how tall you are compared to, you know, your waist, and then they give you a number of, like, this number is the waist, and then that number is the, you know, the pant length. So that's, that's male's work, how it works. Female is a lot more complicated to me. I don't know about everybody else, because each person is different, each person may understand clothes a little bit better, but for me, female pants and other things are just really complicated, because females female clothing, their pants go by a certain number and sometimes they may have wide or different kind of styles like boot cut and that kind of stuff. And that can be confusing sometimes, but mostly what they do is they measure like multiple things because they go by the waist, the hip, and also the buttocks or the bottom. And see, that's where it starts to get confusing because also the waist isn't where most male, well, not where males count the waist. Because the waist is how I've seen it and how I look through measurements. The waist is basically, for female clothing, your waist is like the circumference around, where, like from your belly button all the way around. And that's what they count as the waist. And then the circumference of like your legs, including your butt, that is the hips. And then the, the cut of the leg, like, it matters in, because most of them are more tapered and they, you know, cling to the leg a bit more because, it you know, you want to, you know, ex can't, you want to basically show off the body shape with female clothing. So that's where it comes into an issue if you've been living your life mostly as a male and then you switch over to things that are more tight, you know, form-fitting, they show off more things that don't really fit or aren't the right things or aren't sitting right at the point where you start out which is I mean a hard thing because some people may look at those clothing and just say screw it and not deal with it and then just go on living their life as you know the wrong gender or, or as a lie and I mean I've thought of that myself but it I mean trying on the correct gender for you clothing it makes you feel a lot better Cause I've done it. I mean, I have mostly female clothes now because I've 
basically been working mail clubs out of my wardrobe completely because they were always, you know, sitting there in the back of my mind or sitting like it was in the back of my closet, you know, basically tempting me to just give up and revert back, which I didn't want to do, but it was an option because you're dealing with all this stuff. You get discouraged and depression is a big factor. So you just basically want to give up and just live your life as you've known it before and just want to continue on. But you know you'd be sad most of your, the rest of your life, and at a big point you probably may off yourself because you were sick and tired of you know what you chose, which is never a good option. But also, I mean, like I said, I've been trying to work all the male clothes out of my wardrobe because it's just a sad thing, and I just hate seeing them. So I've been basically trashing them or donating them just to get them you know away from me. Oh. I don't know why I said, oh, but yeah, that's what I've been doing right now. And clothing in general is just a tough thing to do unless you go get like actually fitted at a right place. And, like unless you go actually get yourself fitted, measured, and you would know what you're, you know, what size you are, what you're looking for. Really, for most people that are transgender, it's just, you know, trial and error, trying to figure out what fits, what works, and what look, what you look good in. And, I mean, also, talking about female clothing, bra sizes and shirts, those are a big issue. I don't know how many people are out there that are, you know, trans women like me, but you need to learn a few things about, like, bra sizes. And um, you probably don't know this. If you do, it's great. But there's multiple different things that are a factor for that. Because if you look at a bra anywhere, it's going to say, like, a number and a letter. Basically, there's a like equation they do to figure that out. But really, what it turn it comes down to is the number is the circumference of your chest around below your bust, which basically is below below you know your chest, your boobs, anything like that you have. That will be the num the yeah the number that will be the number around, and the letter that can basically what that is is the difference of your um, underbust is what I think it's called. That's the difference between from your underbust is, you know, the circumference around your chest, and the letter c equals out to basically the difference between the measurements. Which means, you know, if your underbust or your chest size is like a 38, but your full, you know, the full circumference around including your breasts is like two or three then you could be a B or a C so it'd be 38 B 38 C and all that and it's kind of a hard thing to deal with when you are a transgender woman because the sizes don't really fit for you and you know your chest size may be bigger and not all stores carry larger sizes like that and it's hard to find hard to deal with and then there's a whole like sequence of sister sizes that are like like um, the same number or a smaller number with a bigger size that supposedly equals out to the di to a different one, but that's a long process. I would recommend just really going to a store that measures them, talk to someone, get it done, just so you know what you're looking for, and I mean get the information from the person that knows that kind of stuff. Because trying it out yourself, you're gonna either mess it up or basically buy something you can't really wear, and it's gonna be a waste of money. And it's going to make everything, you know, get worse for you. You would feel sorry or sad because something you just spent money on, you can't use. Yes, you could go return it. But if you did that, you know, at a quick time or you were just trying to, you know, buy something, act like it wasn't for you. And then, you know, it's wrong. You need to bring it back. Then it's a whole other process, which, I mean, people like us that are dealing with that, you basically want to get in there, get out and not be noticed whatsoever. So that's where it can come in issues and like buying clothes, you, you know, you some people just go in there, guess their size, grab something and run out, you know, after paying it just to try to hide everything. I mean, it works for some people, but you want to be sure. I mean, before I even bought any clothes, I like did research trying to figure out, you know, what's the difference between the sizes, how to make sure it's going to fit. I mean, when I first bought clothes, I thought some of the well, a pair of pants that I bought that were like a size 12 weren't going to fit me. 
and I just grabbed them because it was like I just went through like I went to a Kmart and I went through like their cheaper or their discount items just to you know grab something because I was sick of just basically lying to myself and doing you know everything I could to try to help myself and then you not having the right kind of clothes or you know it's just when you're going through stuff like that you want to get things done or get things over with but then you don't and then you get discouraged so yeah I went and grabbed a few pairs grabbed you know a pair a couple pair of pants and a couple shirts well blouses and then bought them and walked away no one said anything to me but you know you always get weird looks because I was at, I was right after I got off work one day in my male clothes it was really like it was scary at a po- in a point but also exhilarating like it was like going there and looking at the clothes and actually buying them made me feel happy like this is right like this is what I want to do this is how I want to feel every every day which I don't but it every so often it helps like on my days off of work I wear female clothing which helps and underneath my male clothes at work I always have panties on because I don't have any male underwear anymore because I just trashed them and also they were old getting worn out and I've been buying female underwear because I just liked them and they felt right when I bought them the first time so I just decided I that's a long story but I'll get to back to that but yeah I mean going through wearing the right gender clothing that you feel that you, the gender you are feels a lot better than just aligning to yourself and wearing the different kind or kind of cheating it it's a whole like I said it's a whole long process to deal with that but really all the advice I can give to anyone out there that's transgender is to go out and try clothes on yes it may be scary may you get weird looks but anyone that works there on they're not going to stop you. They're not going to tell you to go do it in the wrong thing or in the wrong place because you're basically paying their salary or their paycheck. So their job is to make you happy and to make you buy stuff. And if you don't, they don't get paid. They don't get money. And then their bills, you know, get, you know, don't get paid. And then they lose things. So no one's going to stop you from going into a department store or anything else, any kind of store that has clothing or goods. They're not going to stop you and tell you you can't buy that. They don't care. Really, I'm pretty sure you can go to any store, walk in in any kind of clothing, and go look through any department. As long as you're buying it and not stealing it, they won't care. And also, stealing clothes just to get them is wrong. Stealing stuff in general is wrong. But it's just not worth you know going to jail, getting fined, doing, you know, what's it doing um, community service. That's what I was thinking. But yeah, it's never worth it. So always just, you know, if you can't really afford much, go look through the discount bin or the, you know, the clearance stuff. There's always going to be clearance stuff. Yes, the sizes may not be the right size, but try things on. See if they fit. See if they work. If you don't know your bra size, go to a place that has bras. They do measurements. I mean, Victoria's Secret does it. And I've been in there and they really don't care. I mean, that's where I got a good portion of my underwear, and I have, I think, just about every single one of my bras Hold on. <coughs> are from Victoria's Secret. Sorry. Talking, my throat dry. But, yeah. And also, don't be afraid to try smaller sizes, because the clothes from, you know, well, for a trans woman, the clothes are meant to be smaller, tighter, form-fitting. So if you buy bigger clothes, then it doesn't fit right, then it, you get more discouraged. So before buying them, try them on. No one's going to stop you. I know. I've gone in there. I've not gone in and tried clothes on. I know it's trying to, kind of hypocritical saying go try clothes on when I haven't. But, I mean, I plan on to. And I kind of want to just to make sure. And there's other stuff like I want to pick up, but I'm just too afraid because I work at a major retailer. And if I would go in there and grab stuff and try them on, people would know me. So that's where it kind of comes into an issue. Because someone of my size and how I look, you can't really forget them easily because really most people that I work with or work around are afraid of me. So, you know, they remember who I am. Even people that I don't work with, like when I was on a different shift, they know me from that shift. I'm like, okay, whatever. But yeah. But going back to what I was saying with... Underwear, what was I actually thinking about? Damn it.
Oh, yeah. Just remember. Not always, because what I did when I first started wearing female underwear, what I do, female underwear, what I would do is I would have the panties on and then wear, like, boxers over top of that just to make sure, you know, because I would recommend doing that if, you know, because you got to get used to the feel of them and how they sit because if you're used to, you know, boxers or boxer briefs or stuff that doesn't fit, that's not form-fitting, changing over, like, instantly may not be the best option because you may have, like, if you're wearing female underwear and male pants, there are going to be portions of the male pants that will rub on your skin or on your body that can cause it to, you know, rash up or chafe. That's kind of why I wore, you know, boxers over top of my panties because they would chafe in certain areas. But after I got used to it, you know, and also I've, you know, be learning to buy smaller pairs of clothing so they fit a bit better. Because I every time I, I'm sorry, I get off the topic, but every time when I was, you know, buying male stuff or when I was younger, I was always told or taught to buy a larger size so you can grow into it. And that's where I kind of think it, I how I got, you know, so large in my size is I would, you know, buy bigger clothes and I think you've got to grow into them. So I'd probably eat more or do more to try to get to fit into those clothes, but then I would buy a larger size. So you always want to try to work back buying smaller sizes or at least something that fits right instead of, you know, so buying something baggier or buying something too small because too small would make you feel even worse. Back to what I was saying with underwear. Is I'd wear, you know, the female and then the male on top and then, you know, male jeans because that was the time where I was just trying it out and see how it felt, which it felt, you know, the best. It was felt like it was something that really was supposed to be happening. But yeah, I would do that and then after a while they I got used to them and I just stopped wearing them, got pants you know, male pants that were smaller or the right size so they fit better so they didn't you know, rub or, you know, move into a weird you know, a weird place and it would get irritating but yeah that's the most I know about clothing is you just want to you know double check you can learn you can search online and learn how to you know basically figure out going from you know male to female pants or female to male pants I still haven't kind of figured out shirts but also they don't really fit that well on me because I am a larger person so instead of having an hourglass shape I have what to say more of a barrel shape which I hate I'm trying to work on it but it's a long process to deal with that and it should be changing because with hormones it when you're going from you know male to female the body mass kind of changes instead of fitting you know going around your stomach and your chest well around your stomach mostly it begins to change over to you know your hips your thighs your buttocks and your breasts because that's where you know more where women carry more of their body mass. So that's where that's where it's changing. That's where things should be going after, you know, I get my levels working out because things are still, you know, a long process dealing with this stuff. But yeah, that's the most I can most advice I can give to anyone out there is go out and try them on. Go out and buy stuff. I mean if you're too afraid to try them on in store, buy things you think will fit and then if they don't, return them. Or what you can do is buy stuff that was too small, and if you're a larger person like me, you can work your way down to the smaller size. Like, I've known, like, a bunch of women have, you know, they call them their skinny pair of jeans or their, you know, hope jeans or something like that, where you're trying to work to a smaller size, because if you're larger or you're trying to lose weight or change your body style, that's something you have to work to, so you have a goal in mind instead of just putting on clothes and hating yourself every time. But, yeah, I mean, that's all I can really tell everyone is to do what you can and try it on and just don't be afraid to try to actually be yourself. I mean, right now you probably can't tell because I have the camera angle, but I'm wearing one of my favorite bras because, I mean, it's more of a sports bra, but it has underwire and that kind of stuff, and that's also another thing is wires and pins and stuff, but... I mean, you just got to deal with it when you're changing from one gender to another and so on and so forth. But it's just one I like because it gives you gives me more definition and it just feels right where the, you know, the sizes are and this shirt is a male shirt. Well, it's a t-shirt, but it's a male cut t-shirt. It's one of my old shirts. But I kept I got rid of all my male shirts basically. But they weren't like t-shirts. All my graphic tees I've kept. The ones I got rid of were 
male, you know, affirming clothing where, you know, button-up shirts with the buttons on the one side for male. I don't know which one it is. But, yeah, I got rid of those shirts because those ones were also, you know, concerning me about not wanting to complete, you know, the full transition. But, yeah, so I ha I got rid of those. So they're out of there, and it made more room in my closet because I keep getting clothes or I have more clothes to that can fit in my closet because there's just weird space in my closet. It's kind of a crappy one. But, yeah, that's what I can give to you. That's the information I know. I mean, out there, you can go out there and check online. There's so many different places that will tell you how to do it, what to do, what to look for, how to do your measurements on your own. If you're too afraid to go get them done, you do your measurements. You need a tape measure that's meant for, you know, clothing measurements where it's one of those cloth ones that you can roll up and whatnot. And those aren't too that, that too expensive. You can get those at most stores that have, you know, clothing or fabric and that kind of stuff. So, I mean... Do what you can to make yourself feel happy. Yeah, but that's all I have for today. I'm Before I cut this video off, I want to thank everyone for watching. I want to remind everyone, you know, to comment down below, to share the video as much as you can. If you want, if you like my videos, you want to see more, go ahead and subscribe. I'm working on getting everything working right. It's just a still learning curve for me to get this stuff to work out right because I switched over basically from a Mac to PC and it's a whole big process because I've been working with the PC for over probably six or seven years. And I am trying to work on my voice. I have appointment with, you know, voice therapists. Well, I don't have an appointment. I've called them. I need to get the, the paperwork done. They'll send me information. I can get stuff moving. It's just a slow process and I've been busy with this, with work, but it's still a process. And last and foremost, I want to remind everyone, you're not alone out there. You have people that are out there doing the same things you are, going through the th same things, and need support like everyone. So go out there and look for them. You can find them. They can help you. You can help them. And it'll just make your life better. But until next week, I'll see you guys. And stay strong.